My organization is very large. We do a lot of counseling to families to help them thrive in a difficult and complex society. We have resources for couples to build healthy marriages that reflect God's design and for parents to raise their children according to morals and values grounded in biblical principles. We have 13 international offices. Our radio programs are broadcast in 26 languages to more than 230 million people around the world each day. And Mr. Wallen, we have resources that I believe can help you even in your situation. And if you would permit us, we'd love to try and be helpful to you. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I believe I represent two groups of people who have not been invited here today to testify. The first group of people are those many voters who have unapologetically endorsed the traditional definition of marriage in state ballot initiatives or referenda. Typically, these votes pass with overwhelming majorities, an average of 67 percent majority in each of the 31 states where voters have had a chance to register their opinions about it. And additionally, 15, additionally four, 15 more states have passed some sort of statute bringing the total to 44 states that have decided in one form or another, usually by large overwhelming majorities, that marriage is between one man and one woman. One of the bill's most serious impacts, the bill we are discussing today, has been largely ignored. It's the repeal of Section 2 of DOMA. That is the section that protects states from being forced to recognize out-of-state same-sex marriages. The bill's revocation of Section 2 is an attempt to undermine the public policies, laws, and constitutions of the vast majority of states for whom traditional marriage is a settled issue. The only possible reason for doing so is to place the issue of marriage once again into the hands of judges and to take the issue of marriage out of the hands of people who have already spoken so clearly in so many states. Should DOMA be repealed, parents in those states which have registered their approval of traditional marriages will be faced with the problems of coping with marriages of which they overwhelmingly disapprove. We need look no further than Massachusetts, the first state to legalize same-sex marriage to understand what I'm talking about. It's this forced political correctness that brooks no diversity of opinion that is the problem here. National Public Radio featured an interview with a Massachusetts eighth grade, eighth grade teacher, Deb Allen, who was exuberant about her newfound freedom to explicitly discuss homosexual behavior with kids after the law passed in Massachusetts. In my mind, I know that, okay, this is legal now, she said. If somebody wants to challenge me, I'll say, give me a break. It's legal now. That's what she said to NPR. The NPR reporter went on to explain that the teacher now discusses gay sex with students thoroughly and explicitly with a chart in the eighth grade. I feel like I'm also representing parents who have not been invited here to speak, who have a sincerely held religious view that marriage is between one man and one woman, and they want to protect their young children against other views. Rob and Robin Worthland in 2006 had their seven-year-old son Joey come home to tell them about a book his teacher had read to the first grade class, expounding on same-sex relationships. At first, they thought that he was mistaken. They requested that the school inform them about such presentations, and they were turned down. Another couple, David and Tanya Parker, had an even worse result when they questioned the teaching of explicit same-sex issues to their young son. Mr. Parker found himself in jail. I'm just trying to be a good dad. Parker said after his arrangement. The family acknowledged there were Christians attempting to follow their faith. We're not intolerant, <clears throat> said his wife. We love all people. That is part of our faith. But see, the judge who ruled in their case, the case of the Parkers and the Worthlands, had this to say. The sooner children are exposed to those topics of same-sex relationships, the better it is. It is difficult to change attitudes and stereotypes after they have developed. Excuse me? Attitudes and stereotypes, these are the sincerely held religious views of their parents. And the judge takes it upon himself to believe that these views, sincerely held, should be erased from the minds of the children. 
Mr. Chairman, that's my opening statement. I'd be pleased to take questions.